Trisha, how are you? Hi, Tanya. So we'll get started here in just a minute. I'm waiting for everything to just go live and everybody to find us. Hi, Kathy. I'm trying to get my hands warm. <laughs> it's cold. Hi, Erica, Anita, and welcome. Finally, we're back. So I have to also give you an update on tutorials with Authentique. So this is going to be our last one till the, the first of the year. It's the holiday season. As you know, next week we're going into Christmas. Can you believe this? I cannot believe this. Hi, Deborah. And so next Wednesday is the 23rd. I know everybody's going to be busy getting ready for Christmas. And then the next week is um, New Year's. So I'm I'm just praying for a wonderful New Year's start. And I'll be back live January 6th with, oh, I think we're going to be having some new authentic papers. And, um, of course, we'll still be all around Facebook in the Everything Authentic group. And we'll be looking for fun designs that you've made, maybe with the, the magical Christmas or the greetings. Um, we may not be doing live videos, but we're definitely here and around. So be sure to post any photos that you make with the Authentique collections, either past or present in the Everything Authentique group. That's our sister group. So we love to see what you make. But today, I'm pretty excited that this turned out the way I wanted. <laughs> yes, Merry Christmas to all. Oh, a couple, one thing I'm going to be using, I forgot we have to cut. It's, it's like a slider card, but I did it so when it slides out, you can put a gift card there. So it is, it's a little dimensional. We, I will be using foam tape. Um, hi, Pamela. And the whole idea of this, my granddaughter, the oldest one, wants just gift cards. And I don't want to just... Um, Katie, I don't think they're going to have a new... But I can't be 100% sure because, you know, Authentique is in the process. They have moved. And so they've always wanted to take Christmas off and enjoy it, which I don't blame them. Um, we look at Authentique as a very large company, which, you know, in, in a sense they are, but they do all the work themselves. So I think everybody this year just deserves a great break. I don't know if there'll be a Christmas collection. I think they're going to be doing some reprinting of some older ones, which is fine with me because all of these are classics. That's the one thing about Authentique paper collections. They're classics. It doesn't matter if it's this year's collection or three years ago. It's just, it's going to work for your everyday life. It's just a beautiful classic. So we'll have to kind of wait and see there. I'm waiting to, and to see myself. So I'm going to be putting her gift cards in here. She wants just shopping gift cards. And then on this side, so the one thing you'll probably want to use if you have a re, repositional. So that's what I used here on this little envelope. And I just use this little envelope as an example with my repositional tape because I will be putting the money in there. Hi, Jan. So I'll put the money in there. You'll want the repositional to hold it down, whether you're going to have it held down and the envelope pop open. You'll need to hold this down so it doesn't get caught on the sliding mechanism. So um, it makes, also you can put your sentiment here. I did not yet. This was my sample to see if it would work. You can also put the sentiment on the back. Hi, Yvonne. And what a beautiful way to give gift cards. I love it. So to get started, I'm going to create the next one on ivory. I want you to be able to see the markings when we cut. A couple things you're going to want for this little slider card. You do need a box knife. I'm going to use my Cricut, whatever um, you have handy for cutting. Of course, your bone folder. You're going to need some score tape with this one. And you, I'm going to use foam tape. It's in the roll. But you definitely can use foam squares, whichever. I'll show you how to cut them. Then this is a just a plastic sleeve that our paper comes in. I'm going to show you how to cut it for this because um, this is what creates your sliding. And it's also extremely sturdy and it's great to sit and play with. It's, <laughs> I love this. 
And then of course your paper collection and I'm going to be using a greeting. So I, I've kind of combined, this is a greeting off of, of, okay, you had the authentic magical and then you have the authentic greetings, Christmas greetings, and they just blend well together. And I know that if you bought magical, you more than likely did buy your uh, greetings which was all the cuddle parts. And because my granddaughter's, this is the one who wants to be a vet, in fact, she's in school for it, um, I'll put the puppies on the front. Isn't that adorable? Hi, RJ. And let's get started. You want to cut, oh, and the ivory picks up, especially if you have dyes sitting close by. Okay. You want to cut four pieces of cardstock. So it's also a very economical project. My first one is going to be three and a quarter. Hello, three and a quarter by five and three quarters. So three and a quarter by five and three quarters. My second one is three and a quarter by seven and a half. And that's this long one. I made it long so that it would, um, you would have a natural slider and you can poke a hole and also add a, a beautiful ribbon if you like. Of course, the short one is, is the short one. Then we have a piece that is six and three quarters by four. And that is the base of this whole creation. Then you're going to have one more piece that is nine inches by six and three quarters. That is going to be this outside the casing. So once again, nine inches by six and three quarters. And that's our outside casing. The four inch by six and three quarters we're going to work on first. And then these two are the, the sliders that are going to go in and out. Three and a quarter by five and three quarters. Hi, Sherry. Three and a quarter by seven and one half. And I'm going to show you how to cut this before we get started. This is just a bag that your papers have come in. Of course, this is a new one. Yours might not have the tape at the top, which is fine. And I'm going to grab my cutter. And the problem is this may not fit in my cutter. It may not fit in yours either, which is okay because this is very thin and it's very easy to fold it over if you need to cut it double-sided because it won't hurt it. But what I'm going to do first, this has a closed bottom. Whether you do the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. So you can, I'm just going to cut off then. You can cut off a little bit off the bottom. It's closed, so you just need to cut that off. Um, acetate is pretty heavy. Um, Jan, if the acetate that you maybe make boxes or different things with is too heavy. If it's heavier than this plastic bag, it won't work. And I know that you guys have got some of this cellophane, either from packaging or maybe you've got, uh, what else comes in this? I've seen so many things. I can't think. But you do want... It's got to be flimsy like this in order to work, okay? And you might hear some dinging in the background, and I'm really sorry. We've got some smoke alarms that need new batteries in the in here, and, and they're going off, and they're driving me nuts. So I apologize if you can hear them too. Okay, we're going to cut a strip that's three inches. So this is a great recycling project, three inches. Save it. You're going to probably make, I, I know you're going to make more of these. Now, I'm just going to cut about an eighth of an inch off one end because it's closed so that I can make one long strip. But we only need our strip to be 13 inches. And most cutters don't go to 13 inches. If yours do doesn't, just go ahead and doesn't have to be a perfect 13. No, you're not imagining the beeping and um, 
I can't get anyone home to fix it. Um, my stamping up, the stamping up cutter does go to 13, so he's pretty happy about it. So I'll just place that at 13 inches. I'm going to hold it so. Then you're going to have this piece left over up to you. I'm going to just throw mine away. And you will have, you have kind of have that indent there, and it's just fine. Now, if the batteries are it's time for new batteries, and I'm about ready to, well, I've, I've told my husband it's time to just replace them. This is why I'm using ivory. I want you to be able to see. Now, you can use a ruler. You can use, hi, Sandy, anything that you like as a straight edge. I use, so if you have a mat that has markings, I use this because I use all of these markings. It just makes it so much easier for me. But what we want to do is with a pencil or we'll see how well you can see this. You want to come in a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to mark the first one. I'm going to pull it down so I can see my markings. So we want to come in three eighths of an inch. Actually, it's easier for me. I'm just going to come over whichever side works for you. We're going to count one, two, three eighths of an inch. So I line up my top and bottom. I'm going to draw a straight line down. I'll turn it around. It's so much easier with my ruler here. Or I'm using my spacers. So that's three eighths of an inch on both sides. Then I'm going to come here at the top. I'm just going to draw from the quarter inch over. And then the same here, which is going to be three quarters. So I'll just lay that there because then I can use my lines. I just check the top and bottom to see which ones match makes it so easy. Hi, Penny. How are you now? That means the line in between these three quarters of an inch, that's what I want to cut. But we need to cut. We, we don't want to just go straight down. We're going to cut a hair to the left and a hair to the right. So let me show you. And I use my scoreboard because it helps to stabilize where I need things. With my ruler, I'm making sure it's sitting to the left side of that line that I've drawn. So it's going to be a little bit off. You'll feel when you're all the way through. Then I'm going to go to the right just a hair so I'm over it. Now I'll be able to make just a little cut there. So you can remove a little piece. The reason for that is your cellophane needs to go inside there. Now we want to cut the same thing to this side. And don't worry if you don't cut the, the exact, the sides don't have to be cut exactly the same. I 
I don't press really hard. That's why I go back twice. Then we're just going to, I didn't quite get all the way down because you do want to go all the way down to that quarter inch. See that one's a little wider and that's fine. Now we're going to place our cellophane through and this is, you, you need to use score tape for this. So we're going to just put, put our ends through. Don't worry about that. Like I said, where you may have had that seam. Because, um, mark and then I'll show you that should be about where your tape hits and we'll hold that down and then we're going to put paper on top there which flattens it also um, another option is to just keep it long and then cut it but you're still gonna run into that seam no matter unless you've got an extra large bag so that's not an issue now, right here on the edge, let me put something darker. I don't know if that helps. I think the lighter helps. Right on the edge, I'm going to score tape that. Good morning, Patty. So we're going to add our score tape. Going to remove the backing. Straight. And I, you don't want to pull too tight. We're going to trim off if there's any. I had a little score tape there. And then we're going to trim any excess. And now you can, I'm actually moving it. You've never heard of score tape? Um, this one, mine seems to be just a hair too tight. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. We don't see any of this on the card. There we go. Okay, that should move freely now. Like I said, that's going to get a little stuck there, and that's fine because we're going to be placing um, papers on there. So that's, that's no worry at all. So once you get this all put together, we want to take our two pieces that are three and a quarter by five and three quarters, three and a quarter by seven and a half and we want to mat those. Now I mat the front and the back. That way if you do want to put something there. 
then you can definitely add that. Well, the nice thing is, um, yes, if you have a local scrapbook store and they are still open, I know that they they will have this, they should have some of this collection, but it did sell out fast. If not, we have it at countrycraftcreations.com online. And we, I also have the score tape. So everything's in stock. And we ship really quick. Okay, my matting. So I did cut two pieces. I need to trim this one down. So the two smaller pieces are three and one eighth by five and five eighths. I'm going to trim these. They're a little long. Three and one eighth by five and five eighths. And I want to mat the front and the back. Now the mat matting for my long piece is three and one eighth by seven and three eighths. Oh, I understand, Erica, but I'll tell you what. I don't know about you. I love to grocery shop right online and then have the shopper text me to say, what else can I get for you? <laughs> you know, there are some things that technology has been wonderful for. And one is keeping me out of the stores. I can stay home and craft more often that way. <laughs> so we're going to mat the front and the back. When using your wet adhesive, do make sure you spread it so you've got a nice flat matted piece of cardstock. Now we'll do the back. So this one, this design is from Authentique's Christmas Greetings where you get all of the cut aparts. Fabulous if you're a card, well, even if you're not a card maker, they're fabulous. They will turn you into a card maker. Yeah, I don't like going to the grocery store even when when it was what we consider normal. I'm not a grocery store person. Never have been. Isn't that weird? And I love ordering from Sam's online and sending my husband to pick up the order. <laughs> it's so great. That's my long piece. Now we want to do the same thing to our short piece. And I do suggest that you do the the um, matting of the front and the back. It makes it makes it heavier, so it seems to give it uh, just more. It works seems to work better. It doesn't like collapse when you're pulling on it. Well, if you follow Authentic Paper here, when the new papers come out, I always show them, um, which is a lot of fun because you guys usually get sneak peeks. And you are usually the first to see them, of course, other than the warehouse. Whoops. That slid. Let's grab that fast. There's our two pieces. We're going to start with the long piece. And you want to go back to, to our slider. And don't worry, it's, it's not centered. It's not going to be centered because you want it to move freely anyway. Now on this one, because it's a longer piece and you see where I have my seam and that's where I connected the two of them together. I am going to put, hello, ooh. Okay, but is New York really getting that snow? <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I'm going to place two one quarter inch pieces, or if you're using three eighths, you can just put down one. Half inch, you can put down one, but quarter inch, do put down two. And now I'm going to remove the backing. And before I do, let me give you kind of an idea of what this is going to look like when we put it down. We're going to put this right to the edge of where it was cut, centering this on our cellophane or acrylic, whatever you used in the back. Yeah, but you know what, when it gets darker and the clouds come, I mean, that's when you retreat to your craft room. You take your hot cocoa and you put on those videos and you just start crafting. It's my favorite weather for crafting. Okay, so long edge needs to come over here to the right edge of the tape to the cutout and let's see what we can do here to center it there we go now fun part holding this down you can practice isn't that cool lots of fun things you can do with these bags from your paper collections now i want you to take um, your your mechanism make sure it looks just like this okay you're gonna flip it over now this piece has to be to the, the the left like this if it's not then you're it's not going to work it has to come over here to the left hand side because our top piece is now going to sit right here now what you want to do is add another piece of score tape. Make sure this is back in its home place, just right there on the edge. Flip it over and let's add another piece of score tape. Cellophane only. Don't get it on the paper. Cellophane only. Now this will sit right on top now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to make sure I did this correctly now if you did it correctly oops, it'll be loose. did it correctly when you pull the long one the bottom one will pop out oops. okay come on Okay, now here's the thing. Try and center it, this space at the top. We do need to use foam tape, but as you know, foam tape is a little bit wider. So it's kind of a pain, or you can use your foam dots. If you have foam um, squares, the only thing is you're gonna have to do, hi David, you're going to have to cut them and you'll have to place each one. Now, you don't have to make a solid strip of them, but you're gonna want them to be pretty close. So you're gonna want quite a few of these. If you have foam tape, and you do want it from tip to tip, we will cover a little bit of the cutouts and that's fine. So I'll get a basic measurement here. This is too thick. So I'll use my Tim Holtz because they don't stick. And I'm going to cut this in half because this is what I have. It is not necessary to cover it solid. But you do want to put them pretty close together. There can be a little bit of a space if you're using your squares. So now I have two pieces. Set that there. Um, and what I'm going to do is this inside part that I just cut probably isn't as straight and neat as I want, right? So I'm going to put it towards the inside. Okay. 
and then you can cut it. Well, Nicole, I'm loving this one because it's for gift cards. And Nicole, I have to tell you, I was just looking at an album you had made me and then your name popped up. How funny is that? Okay, now we're going to go across the top. And we have to do this on both sides. And then I'm going to show you. We will, we will be putting a piece on one end where the gift card is. And that's what gives you more room for the gift card. And, okay, I did try to center this when I was just, just making it. And I tried to use the foam tape. It did fit, but I'll tell you what, this will get stuck. So no, don't try it. It will get stuck. <laughs> like I said, it appears it will fit, but then your slider does get stuck. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Oh, you know what, Nicole? I've always told my children, enjoy the kids while they're little. Because when they get to be in high school, and they didn't believe me, but I'll tell you what, now my kids are like, I have no time for nothing now that they're in high school and junior high. I'm like, yes, welcome to parenthood. Oh, so I put my, my edge that is not cut at the bottom in case it shows. And then it doesn't look so raggedy. So the nice smooth edge will go to this outside. Didn't quite get to that edge. So I will, what I'm going to do is, let's see. Which edge did I not get to? I don't think I'll have to add any. It'll be fine. We can set that aside for right now. Hi, Janice. Our piece that is six and three quarters by nine, that's going to be our case. Uh, yes, I agree. Everybody needs a breather. And you know what? It's kind of nice to just be able to sit and craft and, and just enjoy it. Even if you're not getting a lot of gifts done, and that's okay. Um, you just need to, you need to enjoy yourself. So we're going to do some scoring. And you want to put this at the nine inch side. So this is nine inches long and it is six and three quarters wide. And I'm going to score a half inch. And three quarters. So one half inch and three quarters. And then we're going to score at four and three quarters and five. One half, three quarters, four and three quarters, and five. Let's go ahead and burnish those score lines. I want to try and make these crisp. Comes the slider 
and the back we really can't map first but I'm going to go ahead and map the front so if you lay this down your front is going to be with the half inch at the top and that's only important if you're doing directional I chose not to do directional oh and I cut my paper too long <laughs> what size is this um, this needs to be six and five eighths by three and seven eighths two of them So three and seven eighths by six and five eighths. And that I chose because, again, I showed these in the beginning. And I'm going to triple mat those are going on the front. So we're going to go ahead and mat this piece. But again, if it's directional, just make sure it's the right direction. Wow, Nicole, that's a long time to not be crafting, almost a year. Let's turn this over. Now, let's grab this piece, and it does matter the direction you put it. I have the slider to my right. This bottom is kind of hidden, so you don't really see it. Now, the thing is, let me show you, when you pull this over, see it's upside down. I can't hold it long. So, you need to decide, you know, which way it's going to go. If you're a lefty or a righty, hope that makes sense. Since since majority of us are right-handed, I will put it this way. We've already put the foam tape on so we can go ahead and remove the backing. Now, we're going to be able to slide a piece in, but I don't like to put it out on now because um, in case you do put it on wrong, then the foam tape, and I'll show you, it's where this gift card comes out. So hold everything as sturdy as possible. And let's place it in between our score lines. You may have to help your score lines just a little bit. So it will fold over that foam tape. And now we can go ahead and remove these two. I'm going to close it again, pulling this up so I have my gussets on the bottom. And I'm just going to use score tape again instead of my, my glue. And then I hold it up to make sure I have my gusset. Now, because, do you see what I mean? This kind of hits the top. So what I did on this other one of mine, it's hard to see. 
and this is why I don't suggest you put the foam tape down because of where in case you get these left or right or it's wrong hope that makes sense so so that it will come in and have lots lots of room and you know it doesn't look like this one really needs it Um, let me see if I can get that in there for you to see. I think, but it will. Can you see where I put foam tape right here? So it kind of just depends what you're going to put on there. So if you want to use gift cards, you need to turn this over. This is going to be your front where that half inch gusset is. And I'll show you why. Because we need to add a piece of foam tape just to this inside top and we're going to squish this up to the top so that we have free movement. If you're not worried about, or you're not using this with the gift card, that's why I did it this way. But you could also put the gift card on this long piece. And if so, you're gonna to wanna to add score tape here. So it's very versatile and doesn't matter. That's the nice thing. I wanted it to be on the short side. We're also going to create a little pocket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just run a piece of the foam tape, just a little piece. About two and a quarter inches, but I'm still going to cut it in half. It's too wide. You don't want anything sticky getting on your little pullouts. And it's not really hard to get up on there. My half inches to this side, we're going to cover it in just a minute. So I'm going to open my page. This is why I don't put this on until I figure out which side. And I did put it on that little quarter inch that we didn't cut. With the backing and then what I did is I just kind of smushed it to the top there and now it gave me more room see because we're going to put a little pocket there to put the gift card in if you want so we can go ahead and mat the front Now, most gift cards are average size. Um, they're the same size as a credit card. Um, it would be, Linda, and see, real, I don't think this is any more work than a regular Christmas card. Three and three-eighths is your average uh, size for your, your cards. And you've got plenty of room here. So I just took a piece of the scrap paper. And I'm going to make the gift card holder on this one just a little bit longer. And I've got four teenage granddaughters and a preteen grandson. And they all want money. So whether they get money or a gift card, they're getting these. I decided I didn't want to do boxes this year. So I'm going to cut it at two inches. You just need a little bit for it to stick in there. And then I'm going to cut mine at three and three quarters. I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. That one was kind of snug. Like I said, this can be made just about any size. Now we want to go ahead and cover the inside. Yeah. So one and seven eighths. Three and five eighths is going to be the size I need. <laughs> Yay, just for special people. <laughs> what do other people get? Just a piece of paper? There you go. Just kidding. I didn't make a gusset pocket, you know, with the half inch score lines because it's just, it's uh, too bulky.
and let's just add our adhesive to three sides. Make sure that's out all the way. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. I'll go ahead and add my embellishments for the top. So I used a three by four card. Three and an eighth by four and an eighth will be my matting. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter is the base. And if you're adding an envelope for money or anything, or you may just want to add the solid cardstock to put your sentiment on there. Or your stamp. You can definitely stamp that before you put it down. I'm just going to use this because it's handy. You can use foam dot. You don't even have to pop it up. Hello, Kara. Well, Kara, you're actually seeing the little gift card for Alexis. Look. It's going to have her Christmas presents in it. Perfect. I know. It's so her. Um, I will add some flowers in just a moment. Now, your gift card... And you can even go bigger. I should have put my gift card in there while it was drying. That's what I did before. It is going to be tight. Make sure. You might even want to make it four inches. But now see. With that down, now you've got plenty of room for your gift card to pop out. Again, you can use an envelope punch board. I will be using my mini punch board to make another envelope. Use your repositional tape. If you have it, a repositional dot so that they can just pull it off. And then they can open it. They can have money here. You can definitely put uh, the stamp and the sentiment on the back. And then we're going to add some flowers. Now on this one, let me just grab my hole punch. I do want to put a ribbon on there. Oh, there's my small one. I was going to use my huge one, but I don't have to. So, I'm just going to open this up. You can even add um, you could add, come on guys, help me. What are those called? <laughs> Eyelets. Yes, you can add eyelets. <laughs> and I just grabbed some seam binding. Because it's just going to dress it up for Christmas. Picture, oh, yeah, picture on the left, sentiment on the right. That'll be very cute. And because I doubled and doubled this. It's always fun to have something hanging off. Charmed, maybe. Just tie this. And I have some leftover flowers. And they've kind of got scattered. I don't have a lot left. I'm kind of getting down to the end of everything.
There we go. It doesn't have to have a whole bunch. But this is going to be given somewhat as a gift. And so I do want to dress these up just a little bit more. Now this is the sticker sheet, sticker sheet, <laughs> sticker sheet from Authentic Magical, which is no longer available. They're like gone everywhere on the face of this earth. I do apologize. I'm going to use Awesome Joy. Again, um, she's not, this is basically most of her Christmas presents, so I'm going to dress it up a little bit. And I have this Rick Rack. Kind of cool stuff. It's a self-sticking. So get in your stash. This is a great, um, this is a great little card. You can just use up little pieces and parts that you have. Ooh, Linda, that would be really great. She said, so Linda had said that it'd be a great graduation using the graduation pop paper emblem on the front that you could print out. Yes, so many fun things you can do. Okay, this has already got the self stick. Should have put that down first. It was kind of an afterthought. Had that really kind of... Those are, they just remind me of like, oh, there's kitties there too, like the antique puppies. Just love it. And then I'm all ready for her gift, one of them for Christmas. And look how fast this was. Really easy to make. I think they're darling. And I've got the toy shop. They don't have to be Christmas paper. So if you're, if you've got you need some masculine grab the hunting if you if you were able to get some of the hunting collection from authentic that would be great for your the hunter and your family if it's a outdoorsman because you could put um like from a sporting goods store the gift card in here so many fun fun things you can do and then again you can also make an envelope that this will fit using your envelope punch board and there you guys go. Quick, easy, and yet you can get a bunch of them made for Christmas. And how fun is that? Very unique way to give your gift cards. Remember, we don't have any live shows for the next two weeks. Merry Christmas to every one of you. And when I come back, I don't know. We'll have to see if we have a new collection to show. Um, a new collection or maybe a um, reprint. I don't know. I'm just, I'm going to be as surprised as all of you, but wish you would have done these while I was there. <laughs> I can make you some and send them. And while you're crafting this holiday season, don't forget to share your pictures. If you're using the authentic papers with everything over on everything authentic. We love to see all creations with the new paper lines, the older paper lines. And I will be back January 6th with a new project to start off the new year. And so I do want to wish you all Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And thank you for joining me here on the Authentic page. And thank you for all the support for the Authentic uh, Paper Company. We know that the papers touch your lives and that's, you know, that's the important thing that it's something that you relate to and that you'll use in your everyday create creations. I know they're my go-to papers um, and I can't wait to see the new ones for the new year. Bye, everybody. Have a fabulous holiday season, and I'll see you next year.